Okay, we're going to work a few examples of Gibbs free energy in electrochemistry. We've mentioned in class that these two concepts are analogous to one another. For example, we know that we can write the following. We know that delta Rg, or the change in Gibbs free energy for a reaction, is equal to delta Rg naught, the change in Gibbs free uh, energy at steady state condition, at standard state conditions, plus RT natural log of Q. We also know that delta V for a reaction, the voltage of the reaction, is equal to delta V naught, the overall cell potential, minus RT over NF times natural log of Q, our reaction quotient. We're going to use these to solve some example questions. The first question is given as follows. If we have two moles of SO2 gas reacting with one mole of O2 gas to form two moles of SO3 gas, and we are given that the equilibrium constant for this reaction is 10 at 960 Kelvin, we are asked to calculate what would be delta Rg, the change in Gibbs free energy for the reaction, and indicate the direction of spontaneous reaction if we initially have the following partial pressures. So with these three values, for partial pressures, we would be able to calculate Q. Q is equal to products over reactants. If you have gaseous species, you use the partial pressure. If you have solids and liquids, you use activities. Or in this class, we simply substitute one for them as an approximation. So let's go ahead and plug these in. We know that our products are going to be the partial pressure of SO3, and that's going to be squared because it has a coefficient of two. This is divided by the partial pressure of oxygen, multiplied by the partial pressure of the SO2 gas squared. Plugging in values, this is 1e to the negative 3 squared. This is 0 0.2. And that is 1e to the negative 4. And that is also squared. When I plug those values in, I get that q is equal to 0 0.05. Because q is equal to 0 0.05, but it is not equal to K, which equals 10, we know that we are not at equilibrium. Therefore, the reaction will go either forwards or backwards. So how do we figure out whether it goes forwards or backwards? To answer this, we need to solve for delta Rg. If it's negative, then the reaction goes forwards as written, and if it's positive, it's gonna go backwards as it's written. In order to solve for delta Rg, we need to know delta Rg naught. We don't know that yet. R and temperature, we know. And Q, we just solved for. So as soon as we figure out what delta Rg naught is, we can go ahead and solve this question. How, though, do we figure out what delta Rg naught is? We need to take advantage of the additional information given in the problem, which is that the equilibrium constant at this temperature is 10. Well, at equilibrium, we can modify our expression as follows. We know at equilibrium, delta Rg must equal zero. If it's at equilibrium, then the rate of the reaction going forwards and backwards is equal to one another. Therefore, there is no net change in the free energy. It's just equal to zero. Therefore, that is then equal to delta Rg naught plus RT natural log of K. We use K because we're at equilibrium. Or in other words, K is a special value for Q which can only be used when it is at equilibrium. We know what K is. We know R, we know T. The only thing we don't know is delta RG naught, but we can solve for it. So delta RG naught is going to be equal to negative 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin multiplied by 960 Kelvin. Our Kelvins cancel out. Multiplied by the natural log of 10. And when we plug that in, I find that the value for delta Rg naught is negative 183, um, 18,378 joules per mole. Right? Now that we have delta Rg naught, we can go back to our initial expression, where if we wanted to solve for delta Rg, we needed to know delta Rg naught, Rt natural Q. So we know everything we can go ahead and plug in and solve for this.
Let's change our color here. Delta R G will equal negative one eight three seven eight joules per mole. This will be plus eight point three one four joules per mole Kelvin times nine sixty Kelvin multiplied by the natural log of zero point zero five, which is Q, which is what we solved for earlier. All right? We're gonna plug that in right there. And when we plug this in, I find that the change in free energy for the reaction, delta Rg, is equal to negative 42.29 kilojoules per mole. Because it's negative, the reaction proceeds as written until it reaches equilibrium. All right, so that's the first type of question that you run into. Notice that it had two parts. Uh, at first, it didn't seem like, like we had enough information to solve for it until we realized that it had given us for information about the equilibrium constant. That allowed us to have enough information to solve this question. Now let's shift gears to this question. It's a true or false question about free energy. It says, if I calculate the change in free energy naught, delta Rg naught, at 298K, and I want to determine whether or not a reaction occurs at 900K, I just solve delta Rg equals delta Rg naught plus RT natural log Q by substituting in temperature equals 900K, and I use delta Rg naught from 298 and see whether or not delta Rg is negative or positive. Is this true or false? So this question is definitely false. The reason why is because delta Rg naught at 298k does not equal delta Rg naught at 900k. Those are different values. And when we, when we want to solve for whether reaction occurs at 900, we want to solve for delta Rg, we would need to use delta Rg naught at 900k and not at 298k. So this is false. We couldn't just plug that in. That would give us an incorrect answer. Okay, let's do the last problem, which is an electrochemical reaction between silver and copper. Now, using our standard reduction potential table, we can look up what are the reduction potentials. And we see that one silver ion picking up one electron to form silver has a voltage of 0.8 volts. Meanwhile, one copper 2 plus ion picking up two electrons to form copper has a voltage of 0.34 volts. So the first question we need to ask ourselves is which species is oxidized and which species is reduced? Now, in this case, both of these values are positive. So which one gets oxidized? Remember, a positive voltage is spontaneous. So what we want is which one of these reactions will be spontaneous? The one that's more positive. So this one will occur as written. Therefore, our copper, we're going to switch that, and that's the species that will be oxidized. So let's write this out. Ag plus, picking up one electron to form silver, metal, Meanwhile, we're going to reverse the copper. This is copper metal yielding two electrons to form copper two plus ions. If we try and add these two equations together, we don't have the same number of electrons on either side. Therefore, we know that we have to modify it. We can multiply both sides by two. Multiplying both sides by two will give us the right number of electrons so they cancel out. Note, and this is very important, the voltage even though we're going to multiply the equation by 2, we do not volt multiply the voltage by 2. It remains 0 0.8 volts. And this voltage is zero, uh, negative 0 0.34 volts. It's negative instead of positive because we flipped the reaction and we wrote it as an oxidation reaction instead of a reduction reaction. Now we can combine these two equations. And we're left with two silver plus ions plus two electrons 
um, plus copper yields two electrons plus two silver ions or silver metal excuse me plus copper two plus ion right the two electrons cancels out on both sides of the equation and our delta V naught is just going to be the addition of those two terms together which when I add them is uh, equal to 0 0.46 volts Okay, now that's just the overall cell potential. That's not the voltage that we're going to read if we were actually to put these things in solution and hook it up to a multimeter. That value we have to solve as delta V, which is equal to delta V naught minus RT over NF natural log of the concentration of our species, which is oxidized. That's going to be copper 2 plus over the concentration of our species, which is reduced, which is going to be silver plus. Now, because there are two silver ions there as a coefficient for the silver ions, we need to raise this to the two power, right? So we can go ahead and plug in our values and solve for what this will be. This equals 0 0.46 volts minus 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin this is happening at room temperature, so let's just put 300K. Divide this by um, 2, since there's two electrons involved in the redox reaction, multiplied by 96,500 coulombs per mole. Oops. All of this multiplied by the natural log of the concentration of our copper, which is 2 molar. divided by the concentration of our, I'm going to leave out the units because you can't have units in natural logs. So that's two divided by the concentration of our silver ions, 0 0.5 squared. Okay, we are now ready to go ahead and punch in values for this. And when I do so, I find that the value for our delta V is equal to 0 0.433 volts. Or in other words, in this case, it's not always the case, but in this case, the second term, the part with the RT over NF, natural log of the concentration of our oxidized and reduced species, didn't change our, our observed voltage very much compared to the overall cell potential, but there can be instances when it has a much larger impact.